the one that's my age, who is there with presumed COVID-19, um, and he is now in the intensive care unit. It's Thursday, March 26th. It's about 11.30 at night. Um, I just got back from my shift. We're just waiting. We're sitting here waiting for the inevitable terribleness that we know is going to happen, and it kind of eats away at you. Um, and it's really, it's really hard. Um, and the prospect of this country being open for business and back to normal in a couple of weeks by Easter is both ridiculous and dangerous and there's no way. I spoke to my mom today. She asked me a question. Do you have enough PPE to get you through the surge? And my answer was, I don't know, which brings up another interesting point, which is, you know, what do you do? Where do you draw the line between protecting yourself and helping your patients? Um, that's something that I've been kind of grappling with morally. Um, I feel that I'm in a very unique position to be able to help people right now. I have asthma and I worry that if I do get sick, um, I won't do well. And so it's a really, um, it's a really hard position to be in. At some point this evening, all of a sudden, we just got overwhelmed, ambulance after ambulance. It all happened at once. Um, our ICUs are full. Our floors are full. The emergency room is full. So distressing to hear, and our thanks to Dr. Beaumont for sharing her story. For more now on how hospitals and communities are dealing with this crisis, let's bring in ABC News chief medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton and former Trump Homeland Security advisor and ABC News contributor Tom Bossert. And let me start with you, Dr. Jen. Heartbreaking stories from that doctor and so many other health care workers. I know your brother is on the front lines as well. The United States now has more than 120,000 confirmed cases, the most in the world, and hit that horrible 2,000 death milestone. Where would you say we are today in the cycle? Has the curve been flattened at all in any places? Well, we don't know. Only time will tell, Martha, because when you're dealing with an infectious disease outbreak, as Dr. Tony Fauci has said, you're always behind. So it's important to remember we still don't know a lot about how this virus behaves. We think there could be up to a two-week incubation period, and then it takes time for people to develop symptoms and actually become sick. So what we're seeing today actually probably represents something that happened two to four weeks ago. And if you think that way, we don't know what two to four weeks from now will look like. And, and Tom, the president floated that Easter deadline, you heard what the doctor said, to get the economy up and running again, and said he would release <laughs> guidelines early next week so that certain low-risk areas might be able to ease up on social distancing. We continue to see new hotspots emerge all over this country. And how can you set guidelines when, as Jen said, we have so little data? Yeah, you know, you just can't. What a week.